Today we remember. I remember. I was in my sixth grade class. I sat in the second row from the door, the second seat from the back. We were in my religion class at the time. When the principal came in and had a prayer at the end of class to tell us what happened. We didn't have math that day. Instead, we watched the news. And we saw the second plane hit in real time. And the Pentagon. And Flight 93. My teacher said to think of it as an extended social studies lesson. Because we were witnessing history. On the bus home that evening, I told my friend from the public school, I said, hey, you'll never guess what happened today. And I tried to tell her. All she had to say was very flatly to me. I know. Everyone knows. The whole world knows. Being 11, this whole world concept thing hadn't really set in yet. But when I got home that evening, and on the TV, we saw more pictures of destruction, but even more we saw men in the Middle East rejoicing. Rejoicing at the mass murder of innocent people. I could not understand that. I thought that night the same thing I thought when my sister's Latino boyfriend sexually assaulted me. I don't care what country you are from or what culture you are in. That is never acceptable. Never. Most people who look in the mirror, look in the mirror for vanity. They want to see this great person in themselves. I never saw that when I looked in the mirror. But that night when I looked into my eyes, I wanted to change things. But the next day when I got to school, things were the same. I was still picked on. I was still a fat kid. Everything. Then I realized I needed to do something if I needed change. So I started reading and reading and reading so that I can so that I might understand why somebody would rejoice over cold-blooded murder. By the time I was 12, I knew more about geography, history, and politics than most adults did. But that wasn't being something great. A few years later, I began to understand the people on TV and their faces of torture. I asked someone who was in that same sixth grade classroom with me that day. She was my best and only friend. And she died. And her funeral was the day before I started my high school career. Six months later, I had the second of what seemed like many terrorist attacks to me. Um, I lost everything I had in a house fire. Everything except for the clothes on my back and my family. My point being is that we all suffered some way, shape, since then. Varying degrees of hardship, of course. But it always reminds me of a slogan on the back of sports team shirts. Go big or go home. Fight to win. We've all learned something. We learn it through adversity. We become wiser. But we also learn how to fight. We learn how to fight to not be a victim of our circumstance, to always be chained to this event in the past, to fight to make 
our lives better afterwards. Because there's only pain where we come from. We never forget the events that have shaped us. We let them mold us to become better people. To live better lives. We become resilient. We become stronger. But we don't become slaves. We do not become slaves to where we have been. We don't let where we have been tell us that we must expect the worst in our lives every day. But rather, dictate to ourselves to rejoice that we have days left to live. Because we don't live in fear. Because we refuse to live in fear. Refuse. Because the sun remains the sun, even behind clouds.